What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today, subreddit is r slash choosing beggars. Alrighty, this story's called, Roommate wakes me up to call me a massive freaking cow cause I ate my food. He's a jangling. Hello, my dear fellow Redditors. After an overwhelming verdict of me being not the butthole for snapping at my roommate in r slash am I the butthole, I've decided to share with you this since you might find some enjoyment. And my roommate can pound sand since she already knows I posted here and about this throwaway. Let's point out the obvious. This is a throwaway account. Also, forgive me for the formatting. I am on mobile English isn't my first language. So when people say English isn't my first language, do they mean like they they first learned Spanish and then at a young young age they learned English? Because like this is written like someone who's like a native English speaker. So I find that very impressive. Anyway, uh, on to the post. I've been living with my roommate for a couple of months and it has been going swimmingly. I am okay sharing my food with my roommate, but I don't touch the food she buys because I have a binge eating disorder and I honestly prefer to never Never touch her food. It's just my personal preference to not open that door to allow myself to eat it during a heavy binge. I draw a hard line there. Recently, I bought some avocados and tortilla chips. So during a binge, I ended up eating all my avocados and chips. My roommate wanted to take an avocado to work. She's an essential worker. She hates the food they serve in a restaurant. If she didn't ask me or anything, since we have the unspoken agreement, she can help herself to my food. If she wanted to take some chips too, Today in the morning, she was packing her lunch for work, and she realized there were no avocados or chips left. So she woke me up mad that I had eaten them all. Now she doesn't have anything to take to work, and that I am a massive freaking cow for eating everything. I am so selfish, etc. I am super sensitive about my weight, because even if I am at a healthy weight, I bust my ass out, exercising to counteract the horrible binges I am going to therapy to improve my relationship with food, though I still get bad impulsive binges. I wanted to cry right then and there to her comments, but I took none of her beaver sausage and I started screaming at her saying that I am never letting her touch my food again if she's going to act so entitled to the stuff I pay for. That never in the five months I've been living with her have I eaten food that she bought without her offering me it first. That she can eat crap for all I care. She got teary-eyed and said that she can't afford similar foods that I can, and how much she hates the unhealthy food her work offers, so she wanted to take a nice burrito bowl and that now she has a cheesy bean salad. By the way, she did this with mostly my food. The only thing she bought was the cheese. She also pointed out that I was a spoiled butthole who doesn't need to go out and expose themselves to the virus and still get paid loads. I am a junior accountant in a big company. I do get better pay than her. She left and I got a text later from a mutual friend saying that roommate is struggling with money and that I shouldn't eat all the food, especially when it's so much and that I should think about my health. My roommate expects an apology apology for me for eating everything, forcing her to eat the food at her work, which she gets for free, and for yelling at her. I wanted to be vindictive and eat a bowl of her cereal and throw the rest in the trash, but I am not about that life. After receiving plenty of comments from a lot of people in the original post in Am I the Butthole, that my roommate may have told our mutual friend a completely different story from the truth, I decided to ask her what was said, to be able to to defend myself and to be sure my side and the truth was heard. She told me that roommate told her that the food was bought by the both of us, that I promised her the avocado and chips for her lunch today, and that she just came to me calmly to ask me if I had seen them and that I confessed to her that I had eaten them all to spite her, that I yelled at her to eat crap, I did tell her that, and that I mocked her for being poor. After telling her my side of events, she realized roommate's tell of events had a lot of holes, and mine made more sense. I explained to her that she called me names, woke me up to yell at me, and the only food she owned in the burrito bowl she was taking to work was the cheese. She apologized profusely and texted roommate telling her
her how disgusted she was with her actions. Even though I was originally planning on letting her apologize and allowing her to continue to let her have my stuff again, Reddit knocked some sense into my doormat self and told me to revoke her access to my food. I was planning on having a conversation when she would get back from work with her about how clear boundaries that will be set up in place from now on and how her food will go in the mini fridge that came with the apartment while the fridge I'm borrowing from my abuelita is going to be locked in the pantry with my food. She decided to go spend the night at her boyfriend's place since I'm hostile and put mutual friend against her. Her boyfriend has also texted me and knows that the food is 100% mine, so he is on my side. I decided to talk to the guys in the legal department at work to know what I can do to protect myself in the worst case scenario if I must evict her. After reading the post and updates, my roommate sent me 30 plus texts asking me for forgiveness, saying she doesn't want to be evicted, which, like I said, is my worst case scenario, and that we should talk. It's a day later and she's still to return, and now she has reverted her stance, texted me angrily, saying I'm ruining her relationship, have read it against her, poisoned her friendship with mutual friends, and that she feels like I'm trying to forcibly lead her to starvation and homelessness. When, in fact, yesterday, I spent some of my night making a nice budgeting plan so that she would stop bleeding money, so she can actually buy decent groceries and even start thinking about saving in the near future. This is the first time something like this has ever happened, and after crying my eyes out multiple times yesterday and part of today, I'm at a complete loss. I thought me and roommate were good friends. By the way, sorry for the long post. By the way, uh, eat Dookie, M, Miranda, Melanie, Madeline, Madeline, Manchego, Mum, Mum, Mimosa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know you're also reading this one, you salty woman. Update. Her boyfriend texted me saying he tried talking to her, but she demanded he be on her side, and when he wasn't, she stormed to her parents' house. Her mom is crazy. Pray for me. Update. So her mother just called me, yelling how she will sue me for slandering her daughter online, so any drop of civility I have towards my roommate are out of the window. I'm getting her much calmer sister to come pick up her stuff because I no longer feel comfortable having her come inside my home. I will be returning her rent for this month. I have talked with the legal team, and I am allowed to do this after the most recent events. I also talked with the police department in my area. Also, what I was told by the guys of the legal department is that I cannot be sued for illegal eviction. Edited because it made it seem like the police told me I couldn't get sued for illegal uh, eviction. I will give you a proper update once this is done. I have no idea what the flippity do is going on. She is getting her wish of having free food and hell, even getting free accommodation. I'm shocked it has come to this. Hi ma'am, there are no identifying factors of your precious crotch goblin in these posts. Use your squonky. Put it best. A TLDR broke bimbo roommate gets mad when OP eats her own food, insults OP, and lies to mutual friends who all take OP's side when situation is explained. Broke bimbo goes ape dookie and her crazy mom threatens to sue for ridiculous beaver sausage. Hopefully final update. After considering it, I think I am acting vindictively and without thinking properly. I am going to talk to her like an adult and hope to reach a resolution. I've been seeing Red since yesterday and I haven't been acting like I should as I've been out for blood instead of acting like an adult. I will call her tomorrow morning. This situation has honestly caused a lot of hurt and I am ready for it to be over without completely turning myself into a monster. Her mother yelling at me was bad, but not the worst case scenario bad. So I should be the bigger person and not go forward with the eviction. I will find a way to end this roommate situation in a way that will benefit both and not put uh, McDonaldina in a worse situation. I will step down from Reddit and I will update you in a post on this sub once something actually happens. Thank you so much for all the support. For all of you worried for my cat, he is staying with the guy from across the hall. He also has a cat whom my cat adores, and due to me not feeling safe tonight in my own apartment, I'm also staying with him. I don't know how to thank everyone who has given me Reddit awards. I personally think I don't deserve them. But anyway, thank you so, so, so much from the bottom of my heart with cherries on top. I've always wanted to say this. Wow, my first gold. Wow, my second gold. Wow, my third gold! <laughs>
precious. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty hyper. <laughs> That was a crazy story, and OP, I am so happy, so happy you decided to be as mature a person, person, person as you could be. That is to be admired, everyone. That is the Miyagi way. <laughs> Man, I, I binged watch. Okay, I binge watched all three Karate Kid movies, and then I binged uh, Cobra Kai because I haven't seen the Karate Kid movies in a long, long time. And I watched Cobra Kai in a single day. That it was ridiculous, man. I mean, it's a it's an amazing show, and I cannot wait for season three. But anyway, literally two days after I watched all the Karate Kid movies, Netflix removed them. I didn't know that. So amazing timing. And anyway, sorry. Thanks for sharing the amazing story. Cannot wait for the update. Uh, Miss Miyagi. Alrighty, this story's called Lying Choosing Beggar Ends Up Paying More Than He Bargained For. Till dear at the end, as I realize I can waffle on. That's a cool expression. My mother in law was downsizing and had a decent office chair to get rid of fully adjustable with lumbar support and all that jazz. Hey, I say all that jazz too, man. What's up? If I'm being honest, I really wanted it, but I don't have an office study or anywhere to put it. My desk is my dining room table. She was originally going to drop it off at a charity shop, but they couldn't take it as they don't have fire tags. In the UK, a charity shop can't take furniture with any type of upholstery on them without a safety tag on it to show it's fire retardant. So the missus suggests she list them on Facebook Facebook and try and get some money for it, so mother-in-law can either treat herself or donate the money to the charity. Now, if you were one to buy these chairs new, it would probably cost £150-ish. It was a couple of years old, but in very good condition, as it was used maybe once a month for a couple of hours. The mother-in-law has cats, and so mentioned in the listing that fact, but that the chair had been cleaned. There were photos showing the chair in pristine condition. My mother-in-law wanted to try and get £30 for the chair to get rid of it quickly. Very reasonable. Hey, y'all wanna try floating that across the pond for me? I'll pay you 30. Interested buyer messages my wife, who created the listing so mother-in-law wouldn't have to deal with negotiation, and asked if they would accept 25 pounds for one of the chairs. Mother-in-law says yes, that's fine if they could collect today. So my wife passes this on and asks when will you come and collect? A time was set for collection later in the day and all was well. The chairs were at mother-in-law's house, and my wife was at our house, and so all communication was relayed between text messages. About 30 minutes before they were due to show up, my wife got a message. Can we have the chair for 20 pounds as we have to travel a long way to pick it up? She replied that it was clearly stated where the pickup was from and that the price was 25 pounds. They said that they would be there at the agreed time. They turned up at mother-in-law's house and they must have known from my wife's profile picture that when they met the mother-in-law, it wasn't who they had been negotiating with and asked to look at the chair, sit on it, etc. With a smile on his face, he tried to hand over 13 pounds. When my mother-in-law said that the price was 25 pounds, the guy must have took a stab in the dark and said, your guy said we could have it for 13 pounds as we have traveled so far to pick it up. It also needs to be taken up to the shop for cleaning, as I have a cat allergy and it's not as good as it looked in the pictures. Not one to be swindled, my mother-in-law called my wife to check. I happened to answer the phone, and after she explained what had happened, I told my mother-in-law to tell the choosing beggar that the chair was no longer for sale, and to take it back inside the house. The choosing beggar, seeing his discount chair being pushed back into the house, then offered to pay £20, saying, £20 is all I have, and then offered for the previously agreed 25 pounds for the chair. I was still on the phone at this point and could hear what my mother-in-law was saying, but not what the choosing beggar was saying. I heard her say, As we have said, you've come a long way to pick it up. If you don't want to go home empty-handed, it was originally listed for 30 pounds. Choosing beggar paid 30 pounds and took his chair home, hopefully having learned a lesson about honesty and integrity during negotiations. What? <laughs> That's quite the hopeful view. Uh, we all know that he ain't changing anytime soon. Anyway, uh, that was really scummy of that guy. Jeez, that was, that's kind of creepy too. I don't know why, it just creeped me out. I don't know, just something about the whole situation was just unsettling. 
This story's called, I Can't Help, I'm Pregnant. Pregnant. Okay, so this happened a few years back, long before the pandemic. My husband and I have been trying to get pregnant for two years, and we finally went through a fertility clinic, and we were finally pregnant and couldn't be more excited. At about the six-week mark, I had a friend call me up out of the blue. We knew them well, but it was mostly through Facebook and text, as we didn't live close to one another. We chatted for a bit, I mentioned my pregnancy, and she told me how they were moving and wanted to borrow my husband's truck so they could save a little money. I asked my husband and he said it was fine. Here's the cast, there's me, choosing beggar. So uh, how do you want to do this? Are you going to come and pick it up? I really don't have the time, I'm still packing up stuff. Can you drop it off and we can hang and afterward you can take it back home? I wasn't thrilled about driving all that way, but I had already pretty much agreed. Agreed. So I said, okay, that I'd drop by and bring the truck with me. Once I arrived, she was still wrapping things up and packing things away. I was kind of hoping she would have it mostly packed away, but it was only just a few boxes. I sighed, but asked if I could help her a little bit. Where is your husband? Wasn't he coming too? She asked. No, he's still working right now. Why would he be coming anyway? I asked because they didn't know each other too well and he was working. But I needed him to hold the heavy stuff. I can't do it by myself. She began to whine. Um, we offered to let you borrow the truck, not to help you pack and haul things. And just so you know, I can't stay here all day long. I don't really like driving at night, I said. Why not I come back tomorrow when you have more packed and ready to go? I asked. I still need help with the heavy stuff. I think we can move it ourselves. I really can't be lifting things over 25 pounds. True, I was only six weeks along, but since it took us so long to get pregnant, in the first place, I wasn't going to do anything that could potentially harm my baby. Besides, I never agreed to help her move in the first place. Don't be stupid. You can help me out. You're barely pregnant anyway, she said condescendingly. That comment made me mad. Okay, first off, there is no such thing as barely pregnant. You either are or are not. There is no in-between. And I never said I was going to help you move. I said you could borrow the truck. I'm going back home now. You can figure this out on your own. I know she was screaming at me as I left and was blowing up my phone for a while before she just gave up. I read a post on Facebook about how I had promised her all this bunion sauce. They flaked out on her, but thankfully it was removed. Not sure if she deleted it or what, but I wish I had saved a screenshot to share on here, but oh well. We haven't spoken in a long while, but honestly, I don't need that type of person in my life. Oh, people like that. How do people... I I have a hard time asking anyone for favors, man. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Also, I hate moving things. Like, I hate... Like, if... If I wanted to help you move, <laughs> I'm just gonna hire movers for you, man. I'm not doing that. Because when we're moving over here to this, to this place... Oh my god, it... Such a nightmare. Whew. And I'm not talking about the Penske truck uh, breaking down in the middle of a highway. No. <laughs> and oh God, there was no AC. It was so hot. It was in the middle of summer in Texas, man. It was so humid. Anyway, no, it was like, uh, just, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> But, uh, why don't you guys share in the comments some horror moving stories? Because that is just, uh, it's just moving is a horrible thing to have go wrong. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.